Hello, my name is Rene Green, and this is Crash Course AP US History. And today we're going to be talking about the stalemated 70s, or an era defined by the presidencies of Nixon, Ford, and Carter, and the Vietnam War. Mr. Green, Mr. Green, I don't know if I recall, but didn't you stop wearing reading glasses in elementary school? Yes, me from the past. As a matter of fact, I don't wear glasses anymore. I, I currently can't see. Also, when did you get so short? At the start of the 70s, people were still suffering from the effects of a post-World War II American economy. In fact, almost a quarter century after the end of World War II, Americans had doubled their standard of living. So what happened after almost three decades of economic prosperity? Well, with growing global economic competition, such as Japan and Germany, who are now investing into their manufacturing business as they no longer had to invest in the army as America was occupying them. America was suffering an economic decline as they weren't modernizing their companies from the end of the World War II and they were being surpassed by foreign companies such as Nissan and Volkswagen. Knowing this, Nixon promptly took America off the gold standard, which had previously made the dollar bill a more powerful form of currency, but it made it harder for foreign countries to buy our products. But even with this, America was no longer the economic global powerhouse that it had been after the events of World War II as it was finally being beaten out by other foreign companies. But Mr. Green, Mr. Green, isn't something supposed to happen when you're the economic global powerhouse of the entire world and then you're no longer that? Good question, me for the past. And yes, something did happen. Inflation. Or stagflation, if you can buy into the idea that inflation could suck even more. But what causes inflation? Well, probably the oil shocks of 1973 and 1979, as you know, everything in America runs here on oil. Like, your cars, your CD, your dogs. No, probably not your dogs. But what probably caused inflation to rise the most was Lyndon B. Johnson's plan to fund the Great Society and the Vietnam War simultaneously. While collecting tax dollars for military services and welfare inherently sounds good, it's not when all this money doesn't have anything to be put into, and as you can recall, America's state of manufacturing wasn't the best at the time. Speaking of the Vietnam War and its effect on the American economy, was it popular back at home? No. Let's go into the thought bubble. The Vietnam War saw about 280,000 casualties, with 30,000 being killed and 250,000 being wounded. The Vietnam War was also the third most costly war in American history, and by its end, it was the longest. The draft system was also very unpopular during the Vietnam War as it exempted draft students and thus it was discriminatory against poor people, especially African Americans. But these, these same African Americans and students across the nation were justly satisfied when the 27th Amendment, which granted 18-year-olds the ability to vote, was passed. The Vietnam War was also unpopular among the soldiers who fought within it as they were subjected to the harsh conditions of the rainy Vietnamese jungles and the booby traps that lay within them. And another incident that had increased anti-war sentiment here home in America was the My Lai incident where American soldiers had massacred innocent bystanders in Vietnam. Thanks, Thought Bubble. Mr. Green, Mr. Green, but aren't you going to talk about the judicial branch? Weren't they cool too? Ah yes, the Supreme Court. They were cool too. Unless you were a conservative who was against privacy of the individual, then the Supreme Court probably sucked for you. And who was the Supreme Court, you might ask? Spearheaded by Earl Warren, the Supreme Court sought to protect the individual's rights, an example being Yates v. United States, when radical and reactionary speech was protected under the clause of the First Amendment, unless it proposed a clear and imminent danger. But Mr. Green, Mr. Green, when are we gonna get to talk about Nixon? Wasn't he like Watergating or something? Like, the Supreme Court is way too boring at this time. I don't want to hear about conservatives and their problems against the youth. Well, Nixon, as you know, was an environmentalist. Wait, you didn't know he was an environmentalist? Well, of course Nixon was an environmentalist. He created freaking EPA! Which its sole job being to protect the health of the environment and the people. As a side note, he also created the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is less cooler because it wasn't mentioned in The Simpsons, but... The EPA and the OSHA, see it obviously doesn't sound as cool in its abbreviated form, were crucial for development of future programs which help the environment. So of course Nixon was an environmentalist, why would you ask something like that? But on to the water gating. Even though Richard Milhouse Nixon was never going to lose against incumbent George McGovern. Like who votes for someone named McGovern? McDonald's? McWendy's? 
Anyway, even though Nixon was never going to lose to McGovern, as he captured the single state of, wait for it, Massachusetts, still opted to cheat by bugging the rooms where the Democratic conventions were being held and the hotel rooms that the Democratic nominees were being stationed in. He did this by organizing creep, or allegedly organizing, the Committee for the Re-Election of the President. First thing, if you ever want to obstruct justice, you probably shouldn't use a name like Creep. It doesn't bode well for the press. Continuing with this trend of obstruction of justice, Nixon would create some plumbers who would fix the leaks or some information that he preferably would not want to get out of the White House. Gee, I wonder if this obstruction of justice thing is kind of getting... familiar. And what was the end result of all this obstruction of justice? Well, he got impeached or more formally, he resigned. The resignation of Nixon, we got the most exciting president ever to bestow upon this great land of America, General Ford. Wait, G Gerard? Ger Gerard Ford? Who in their right mind would name their children Gerard Ford? Well, besides having a, you know, billionaire entrepreneur who made cars for a living, we had Gerard Ford, the first unelected president ever. And was he great? Well, the first thing he did was pardon Nixon. That about sums up everything he did important. So who's going to supersede the great presidency of Gerard Ford? I don't know if you can tell, but I am deeply disappointed that we did not have General Ford as our 38th president. Speaking of numbers and presidents, we finally got our first Democratic president in... four? Eight years? Jimmy Carter. Then what was Jimmy Carter good at? Oh, well, apparently, foreign policies. Ooh, I know this one. Aren't you talking about the Iranian hostage crisis where 52 American diplomats were held hostage under the Iranian government? No, me from the past. It's not a foreign policy when you had 52 American citizens who were held hostage for 444 days and released on the day of Ronald Reagan's election. Wow, jeez, Jimmy Carter, you really did have a bad huh? No, of course, that's Jimmy Carter's worst foreign policy decision. His best being Camp David. Of course, being where Jimmy Carter oversaw the peace agreements between Egyptian and Israeli government leaders. But overall, Jimmy Carter was probably the best ex-president, as he would work for many humanitarian causes, such as building homes in Africa. Oh, is it time for the mystery document? The rules here are simple. If I guess the author of the mystery document correctly, I don't get shocked. And if I don't, then I get shocked. For too long, we have lived with the Vietnam Syndrome. Much of that syndrome has been created by the North Vietnamese aggressors. Over and over, they told us for nearly 10 years that we were the aggressors bent on imperialistic conquest. It is time we recognize that ours was, in truth, a noble cause. Well, the author was talking about it as if it were after, because it said for 10 years, obviously. And he probably said to increase his popularity, so I'm going to guess 41st President George H.W. Bush? Ronald Reagan? But he said 10 years. Ah, oh, that doesn't matter. Fine. Yaga! Well, Ronald Reagan really was an important figure post-Vietnam America because of his conservative policies and not surprisingly, the rise of conservatism. As backlash to the oral war and Supreme Court cases and the Great Society would be prevalent in 1980s American policies. But that's a story for another day. Oh, and the War's Powers Act was an attempt to limit the president's blank check in war by making it required for a president to report to Congress 48 hours before, yada, yada, yada. And Leslie Lynch King was just Gerard Ford's birth name. Bye. AP Crash Course History was brought to you by my home and my sanity. A good producer of AP US History was Lois Lopez. Can you say hi? Hello. And that concludes the end of the presentation.